Oh, buenos días a todos. Uh, muchas gracias a Juan Mendes a, a, a mi fe, uh, pero discúlpame, no hablo español. So, now, uh, well, thank you very much. As, as Joanna says, it's always a pleasure to come, and each time I'm very impressed by the energy and enthusiasm that, that comes from Spain. And uh, Federico was saying he was surprised that everyone was exceeding his expectations at how much teamwork there has been. But for me, it's not a surprise because I see the strengths in Spain and I see the leadership and the teamwork, and it's good to see that leadership and teamwork bearing fruit. So it's, it's very impressive. Thank you for the opportunity to come and, and learn and, and, and share. So I'm speaking on behalf of, of this applicant consortium, which is led by Penta, but also involves uh, Janssen and, and Bayer and, and Novartis and, and other companies, including, including Sanofi and, and Pfizer. And I just want to touch on the current state, emphasizing some of the points that other people have made. The consortium that we're part of and the concept that builds on the work that you are doing in Spain. But I want to give you the context of the rest of the world, how we're working towards global interoperability. So as we've heard, there are many industry studies, but there are many problems delivering those studies to time. And this is partly because of poor organization at site level, and partly because of poor design. In the past, people have taken protocols that work in adults and used them in children. And we need to improve that situation. And it's good to see the regulators leading us in this, in this direction. But we have fragmentation. In many countries, there is very poor communication between sites. That is no longer true in Spain. Over the past year, 18 months, the fragmentation has gone and everyone's working together and we need to reduce inefficiency by everyone has different contracts, everyone has different expectations and this, this slows everything down. In the past we've had very poor engagement with children and young people but again this is changing and, and Spain is, is at the centre of, of that work. And often we have very poor feasibility estimates and we don't know how many children can join studies as people have emphasised earlier on. We also have many opportunities as precision medicine is developed, as we repurpose medicines, as biologics move more and more into paediatrics, even into neonatology. We have big data and I was in Washington yesterday at a meeting hosted by the FDA and it's clear that only working internationally can we make the most of big data. We have many new methods about design, about extrapolation, using devices and apps. We need to work globally and we need to remember, as people said, the interface between regulatory and reimbursement assessments. So there are many opportunities and as we've heard, there are many paediatric trials planned. This builds on data we heard earlier on, looking at the number of studies that were planned each year. These are new studies entered onto UDRA CT each year, and the number of people who are going to be recruited to trials has increased year on year. And we need to remember that many of these children have not been recruited yet, so there are many opportunities across Europe, across Spain. The paediatric investigation plans have changed the landscape and many companies now see paediatric development as routine, as essential. The trouble is that many amendments are needed for paediatric investigation plans and the most common reason for this is the timelines need to change. And that's probably because of the fragmentation, the inefficiency and the poor feasibility. So there are many studies but we can do them better. We've seen some data about how difficult it is to recruit clinical trials among children. Here is data looking at uh, paediatric pulmonary artery hypertension across several different companies. 
and we looked to see the completed studies needed 64 children uh, in 48 sites, 48 countries, <coughs> recruiting 0.06 children per site per month. So then full, again, 41 sites, one-tenth one of a child per site per country per month. This gets even worse for the second and third in class when we're needing 17 countries, 60 sites, and a thousandth, a ten thousandth of a child every site, every month. So we, are, we, we, can, we can improve on this if we bring all the sites together and we have economies of scale so that the sites are ready for pulmonary artery hypertension studies and they're ready for mucopolysaccharidosis studies and they're ready for type 1 diabetes studies and so on. We can, over this we can overcome this problem by working together as you're doing in, Europe, in, in Spain, and we need to coordinate the same work across, across France, across Germany, across Italy, and all the other countries. And that's what we're doing with this IMI2. So I may have got this wrong for Spain, but at the moment, we can imp we, we've shown that we can improve the efficiency in some countries. In the UK, we have 110 sites, we have one contract template that all the companies use and adapt. We have a dedicated team for industry liaison, and we have many clinical trials, two or three hundred clinical trials coming through the network each year. In Finland, they have industry, and same in Switzerland, Austria, the Netherlands. They have a single contact point for the whole country, so the industry just picks up the phone to one person, writes one email, and things then get spread out. And this saves time for sites, saves time for countries and companies. And France, Spain, Italy are developing in the same way. And we hope to share good practice from multiple countries. We also have a number of specialty networks, many of whom have been mentioned today, who all have registries, who all use the same contract across all their sites and work closely with industry. So we can learn from the specialties, but there are five or six advanced specialties and 23 other specialties. So again, we can learn transversally across specialties and we can learn across countries. The benefits to the companies are to speed things up, but for, for our site, we don't want to work with 25 different specialties. We don't want to work with 10 different companies. We want to work in the same way with all of these people because that will make it easier for us and quicker for us as a site as well as easier for, for sponsors. So we've, heard, we've mentioned Emprima and there are many groups of this who have all joined this, um, this consortium in one way or another. So there's plenty of experts out there. We need to bring people together. So we, we need to bring people together across Europe and the opportunity to do that is to work on the policy level to influence governments and the European Commission about the importance of, of research infrastructures. And we do this through the European Strategic Forum for Research Infrastructure. And this is a map of the health infrastructures across Europe. The, ho the horizontal axis shows the fact we're going from molecules to populations going from health through to disease. And there were research infrastructures about bioimaging, about biomarkers, about imaging, about um, re regulatory affairs, and about delivery of clinical trials, among many others. And we also have the recognition that pediatric clinical trials are just as important as everything else but we need to work with all these infrastructures to give children across Europe the same opportunities. And we're just developing a translational research infrastructure for children that links across all of these different, different groups. So we're taking a pan-European perspective and working with governments, working with the European Commission to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to join, join a trial. So we're working towards a coordinated approach to deliver high quality trials that can be part of submissions to, to regulatory agencies. 
in multiple countries, in multiple sites, all age groups, all disease groups, incorporating innovation. And we want to do this so that we improve the availability of medicines used by children and we promote high quality trials that share resources between studies and then use experience to improve the design of clinical trials. So we don't get trials asking children one years old to do a, a six minute walk test because the, we can inform people before the PIP is written, before the protocols are written, what is feasible. And we don't want individual key opinion leaders to do that, good as they are. We prefer networks to do it who represent, who have access to real world data so that it, feasibility is, is realistic and not just guesswork. And networks can, can do this. So our proposal is to use the, the funding from the IMI2 project to set up a network and, and its processes working with national groups and internationally and then to demonstrate the value of the network with selected studies and, and sites and then go from demonstration projects to, to a broader network. And this means finding out how much it costs to do trials and then turning that knowledge into a business case and a business model that can then be used to persuade governments, persuade companies to carry on funding this. And it's, uh, we're very lucky to have very strong leadership for that work on developing the business case and business model. With that strength coming from Spain with Federico and all his experience bringing this team together will be applied for the benefit of the rest of Europe. So all the experience that, that you're developing here, all the teamwork that's coming through Spain is going to be the example that other people will follow as we learn from experience and develop the business model. So we're very lucky to have, have such a strong base for that, that business model. We want to move from demonstration projects to a broader network, which means persuading funders to invest in sites, to invest in national networks and international networks. Now, each of the sites that presented earlier on gave a fantastic example of co-funding from the site and from industry or, or other funders. And that's the model that we want to share with the rest of Europe. If you persuade your hospital managers about the importance of children and the research, that gives you enough money to get started. And then as time goes by, you can build up the portfolio and become stronger and stronger. And this is happening in many ways in, in Spain and we want to use that experience and generalise it and show how we can spend money effectively. In the past, people used the emotional arguments in favour of children's research. Children are small, children are sick, children are cute. That gives you some money, but it's not sustainable. And we need to be able to persuade people that children are sick and that you should spend ch money on children as well as money on bridges or nuclear power stations or, or whatever you want to spend the money on. The governments have to make choices and we have to give them the information they need to make choices. We have to give them a dose response curve for their money because then they can compare it to all the other demands. There are plenty of other ethical and emotional arguments that get made to governments and we need to turn that into, into money so they can give us a fair comparison. So we need to demonstrate financial, economic and social value. We need to capture that value that you all create and then get that, some of that money back to you. And again, uh, Federico is, 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 is co-leading that, that work. So we're working across multiple countries. I think I've been to 15 countries in the past 18 months. So I can say that Spain is the best improver <laughs> that Spain has made, made the most progress in the past 18 months compared to all these other countries and the UK and um, other people there. And we've worked in the same way. We've talked to lots of people. We've talked to regulators. we talked to industry to find who are the right leaders in each country. And then everyone talks to each other, which is what you've done. And then we have face-to-face -face meetings, or several face-to-face -face meetings in the case of Spain, and um, then each country is going to work 
in its own way to have these general principles spread across. And I think you've got a very good model that we, we want to, to learn from and we want to work with very closely. So we, we have uh, an academic consortium which includes a number of, of countries and um, a number of new countries as well. So uh, I'll be going to Portugal, Greece and Sweden before the end of the year to, to bring all these people up to speed. And your example is one that we, we will be sharing. We're also working with, with a number of specialty networks. We've heard about the importance of the European reference networks and, and these groups are essential because the rare diseases have, have a massive impact upon child health and public health. And so we've got some of these ERNs as, as consortium members and then we need to liaise with all the others. And then we've got other groups, the European Young People's Advisory Group, the Eurodis representing uh, families with rare diseases, ECRA, our partner, the European Network of Research Ethics Committees, and TEDI, and some other IMI2 projects. So we're trying to build a broad way of working so that everyone's coordinated and everybody can, can benefit from that collaboration. Here is what we see the, the network doing through expert advisory groups, through international coordination, and then national hubs and sites. As we develop the trust and understanding of, of sponsors and, and regulators, we plan to give validated advice to the designs of protocols or, or drug development plans. So it's not opinion, it's validated advice. And then we need to work with feasibility and we need to develop standardized ways of assessing feasibility so that when someone in Spain says we've got five patients, then we can give the same weight to that estimate as people in Germany saying they've got five patients or somebody in Greece saying they've got two patients. We need to collaborate on, on that information and then that gives us a level playing field to compete on, 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 on recruitment. And then site identification, we need to agree that a site has the same capabilities in Italy in France, in Greece and in Spain and then we can set up studies in the same way with the same principles that are then adapted to the way each hospital works. And then by working across countries or working across hospitals we can support and troubleshoot recruitment problems. We find this is very helpful when a trial isn't working if all the sites talk to each other because if there are ten problems each site has solved one of them. If you bring everyone together, then you've solved all 10 problems. And we can do that across Europe because for rare diseases, there'll be 10 sites in, in 20 different countries. And we, we can work together through standard communication pathways to help with that. So here's a map of how studies can flow through the global international network. And this can be mirrored in, in each country. So the plan is that the sponsor, be they industry or, or public funded, find a single contact point. Maybe it will be called pediatric trials at europe.com or something like that. <laughs> One obvious contact point. And this single contact point is the front end and industry or public funders don't see anything else they just see one phone number, one business relationship manager, one email address. But then there's a back end that we will work on to provide good results. And there's a, going to be, we hope, an international infrastructure office spread between uh, Padova and, and Liverpool. And then an, in, an advisory group secretariat that would be hosted in the Netherlands. And the infrastructure office will link site feasibility identification by taking a summary of the protocol and sending it round to all the national contacts who then send it round to all the relevant sites. We don't want to send every protocol to 800 sites in Europe and you don't want to send every protocol to all the sites in, in your network because you may know that 
somebody is doing three type 1 diabetes studies already and if you send them another one they're going to throw something at you so you have some local intelligence that can direct the request for feasibility request for sites appropriately so we, we want to do that in a consistent way across Europe so that everyone gets the same information and then people can make choices and the national hubs will do this and when there are strong specialty networks then they can they will be involved as well but we also want to make sure that the protocols the programs are well designed and we can do this through the expert advisory groups that we plan to set up for all the specialty networks and all the methodologies and have strong access to children young people and families and as each request for services comes through then the expert advice coordinating group will decide who needs to be involved in each each request and bring them together to give to give that advice and that advice will sometimes inform the operations and sometimes go straight back to the sponsor to, to help them and it's it's advice it's not binding but the network will work more easily if people follow the advice because we'll be learning from from what we do so I think many of these components are already in place in Spain and what, what we want to do is coordinate what's happening in Spain what's happening in the European reference networks with what's happening with Penta and SEOP so that sites have a clear idea what's happening sponsors have a clear idea what's happening and together we can build up trust build up confidence and and move ahead more quickly in the way that everyone's been suggesting so we need to work on change management and the publicly funded consortium is working on a range of doing ways of doing this creating a sense of urgency among the clinical community um, building up shared resources webinars road trips allowing people to move between sites to learn from experience and, and so on and industry partners if our consortium is funded will will do the same thing within the companies particularly internal marketing and so we need to develop resources that companies can use to market the network to their to their colleagues and i'm told the most important form of marketing for anything in pharma is success and positive metrics and first patient first visit times and the number of successful monitoring visits that don't need to serious protocol breaches so if we want to become sustainable if we want to be a successful network then we have to focus on the delivery of high quality trials yes we want to write protocols but we won't write good protocols unless we deliver good trials so we need to focus on setting trials up quickly getting children recruited quickly high quality data entry because that's what's going to make a difference to the children and at the same time improve the funding for the network so we need to put resources at site level and then work in different ways bringing in business know-how and patient and public expertise to to manage this change process which as I say is accelerating very impressively in Spain so we're having the same conversations in the northern hemisphere in the rich countries at least so there are there's a global pediatric network that is being formed in the United States there's a call out from the FDA and the NIH about funding a global pediatric network of course it's based in America so a global pediatric network cannot include anybody from outside America but that's that's America um, but we, we, we talk about having several global pediatric networks um, and we, there's one in Canada and Thierry Lacaz leads that um, we have Emprima and other groups uh, Hide Nakamura from Japan is coming to visit us in Liverpool on Friday so we're all working together and we hear there's probably going to be a Japanese network that matches what 
you're doing, what we're doing. So we want to support global drug development by having similar processes in Japan, in Spain, in Canada, in Australia, so that the protocols are designed together. So all of this depends upon delivering good trials quickly, efficiently, with high quality data. We can talk about the theory, but at the end of the day, at the start of the day, it's about trial delivery, high quality, quick trial delivery. So I hope we've identified that there are many challenges, but there are many opportunities to overcome those challenges. We need public-private collaboration, but again, I see a fantastic example of that developing here. And the strengths in Spain need to marry up with the strengths across the continent and across, across the world so that we can deliver these medicines quickly, building on the integrated Spanish trials network that I'm, I'm so impressed each time I come. Thank you very much.